again. Hello. So you guys are ready? Okay. Uh, I forgot to fix this. So let 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 us clear this first. Okay. This better be uh, twenty over nine. You know. Okay. So now I think you guys can complete the work here. Uh, 20 over 9 here can be uh, used to track back here. And if it's going down, this one is going up. Okay, 20 over 9. And because this is uh, on the right of beam number 2, it's 20 over 9 going up. So this one comes here. to be uh, 20 over 9 down. And this one is down 20 over 3, just like the first one. So this goes back here to be uh, uh, 20, uh, 5 over 3 up, right? So by that, you can complete the force on your uh, columns, OK? So it's another business at hand, that is the beam on the second floor, uh, okay? Now, uh, remember that you will have the moment from column A here and then from column E before you can have the moment on uh, your beam number four on the second floor. So right now, you know, once you, you crack the code by using the uh, the portal method to obtain the shear, the rest is just, you know, completing the work of the free body diagram. So, sorry, let's move a little bit. So this is the joint and it's column uh, A on top, column E, and then your beam number two, okay? So that means uh, for this, we have the, uh, Counterclockwise moment of 20 over 3 from the top. So we better have 20 over 3 here. Correct. And then uh, we have another counterclockwise uh, moment, 30 ton meter from column E. So we are going to have another clockwise moment here as well. Okay. That's uh, 30 from column E. So from that, uh, I should use black, right? Because this is from another one. So from this, it's 20 over three. That's 30. So that means I can calculate the moment on my beam number two, that's gonna be 110 over three. Okay, and we begin the same uh, process, you know, because now I can look at beam number, oops, sorry. Uh, beam number four, not number three, right? Business as usual, because if this is going that direction, this one is therefore clockwise 110 over three. And you are again doing the same thing, okay? Uh, sigma moment equal to zero. And now you should notice that for the beam, you get the moment first, you get the shear later. So 103. 110 over three is equal to the shear multiplied by the length of the beam, half the length of the beam, which is four meters. So our shear is 110 over 12, and it is going down. And um, that means this is going to be 110 over 12. 
right? You get this from that. And this is going that direction. And that is going in that direction, okay? Um, the number is the same, uh, 110 over three for the moment. So then that's the second one, okay? And if you want to try to complete your uh, axial force, it's uh, the same. But remember that this guy has 40 on it as well. And you have the shear from the columns on top and the bottom, which is uh, 10 over three and 10, going right and left respectively. Going right and left. That's 10, that's 10 over three, okay? So you can calculate the, this axial force if you want. It's uh, too straightforward. There's no need for me to do it for you, I hope. Now let's move on to the next beam. And this guy, again, we have a problem a little bit because your free body diagram now, it's gonna be, wow. This is like the ultimate one because, you know, has so many coming on. Uh, we have to begin from 103 going in this direction, right? So that's 100 over three. Um, let me, okay, uh, 40 over three going in that direction. So we have 40 over three coming in here from the column B on top. And then from the bottom, we have 60. Okay, oops, whatever that is. All right, that's from column uh, F at the bottom. So from this, you only get the moment. Okay, and uh, wow, what's the number? It's confusing. So it's basically, um, the blue one is going to be 20 over three, okay? So you get this uh, blue moment from looking at the moment at the joint, okay? So let me uh, try to write it for you. This is from column B, right? That's from B four, and this is from column F. So you get the blue one, and now you can uh, complete your job on the beam. Okay, 20 over three. And again, using sigma moment equal to zero, you have 20 over three equal to V multiplied by three, so that's another uh, 20 over nine. So it has the same, right? Okay, so that's uh, 20 over nine coming down. So you, you now you know the numbers on the left. You can go to the right. That's gonna be another 20 over nine. So that means the moment here will have to be 20 over three ton meter. Okay. And the, uh, the very last one is again, the same uh, business. Okay. You need to uh, have the, and one minute, I'm confused myself. Just one moment, please. Okay. Uh, right. I think it's pretty much the same. Um, okay, so let's move forward. And then, oops. Sharing is gone. Let's hope that uh, we can get that back ASAP. Okay, back in back on business. Like in business, okay? So it's another joint. Oops. Um, excuse me? Yeah. 
Uh, the moment that come from beam number four should be uh, clockwise, isn't it? Hang on. Um, beam oh, it's correct. And this is the red one, right? So it's kind of clockwise. So it should be, oh, it's clockwise on the right. See this one? Oh, oh. So uh, that's, oh, okay. that's correct. Okay. Th thanks anyway. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, you see, you, you, you should see the trend of the direction of the moment. You see, on the beam or on the column, they, they always go on the same direction. Because the external force is trying to twist your member one way, and therefore your internal moment is trying to bring your structure back against the external force. So if we are talking about the, uh, the, the internal moment due to side sway alone, like in this case, generally they all should go in the same direction. Can you notice that? Like uh, the one on the beam like this, you know, if you get one uh, clockwise, another one on the opposite end should be clockwise as well. So yeah, that's why we, we got this. And we move on to the next joint. This one is clockwise, uh, 12 over three. So it's kind of clockwise of 12, uh, 20 over three. Okay, and this is uh, the third joint. So the moment from the column should be the same. 40 over three and then 60, right? So now I do I have the number for the last one? Ooh, I don't have it. Uh, oh, 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 one moment, one moment, one moment. Okay, all uh, right. One, two. No, I don't have it. So, uh, well, that, that's, the, that's the concept, you know? So if I am going to do this, now that's how much? 60 multiplied by three plus 40 minus 20. So that's, uh, uh, what does that say? It, oh. Forty over three. I wonder why they're not equal, but this, this should be, you know. Um, hang on. Cut. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, at the previous joint, I got one hundred and ten over three. The blue one. This one, right? The previous one. The. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 20 uh, over 3, right? It's a bit, uh, yeah, one moment. Let, let me try to check it because if you, if you look at this joint, it's uh, pretty similar to this, you know? And is this correct? Uh, that's uh, 130 over 3. So that's 20 over 3 is probably not correct. Let me double check it. This is so many numbers. I think 20 over 3 should be 110 over 3. Yeah, 110 over 3, right, you're right. So this yeah, yeah. wrong place. So my apologies, this should be 110 over 3, right? That's what you're saying. Okay, so that's 220 over 3, which is, uh, yeah, that's correct. So, Again, my mistake, uh, not unusual. So this better be uh, 110 over three. And that means our moment here should be, a moment is, uh, all right, 100, oops. And 10 over nine, now that looks more correct. I need to erase this. And 
now we got oops it's one more okay that's a 110 over 9 so that red one yeah that looks correct now and the moment should be 110 over 3 so now we come here to erase this thanks a lot 110 over 3 and this should be 110 over 3 so you know this beam should be similar to the one on top because the moment is the same yeah that, that makes sense okay i look I, I look for something like that but then i probably look at the wrong number that messed up okay so uh, i think that that's the concept of the uh, portal uh, method we have 20 more minutes to go to introduce the 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 cantilever concept to you okay so um, you know, I, I have uh, thought about this before that uh, if I am going to, to try to complete this example and give it to you like a PDF file. And then if I show everything at one time, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get anything because if when, when you look at the complete free body diagram of every member, it, it's not very useful right you, you need to see how things uh, have been developed so let me see if i can do that okay uh that would be more useful but you have the video clip but it's not 100 percent complete and there's some kind of a human error along the way like this you see that uh because that's a limitation of doing things on small screens Okay, uh, but uh, so thank you very much for your help, right? And see, see if I can come up with a file and help you. So let's now move on to, to see, um, because that is complete, I suppose, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then you, you guys can, can get the shear and put it under the columns, okay? So now let's, let's see, we, we're going back to the same uh, structure, but this time, uh, we're going to do it with the uh, cantilever method, okay? So I am going to erase everything here. Huh? Again? Okay. It seems like uh, the this pen is connected to the iPad with the internet as well. So when the internet has a problem, it has a problem. Okay. Okay, so uh, it feels like in the classroom that I got to erase the board myself. <laughs> okay, so the cantilever method now. Uh, we are looking at this uh, beam, a cantilever beam, but you have to turn the, the structure 90 degrees so that you will see that your beam is now something like this, you know? Say so that becomes a support, right? And then you have the 40 and then the 20. So that is your beam. So let's say everything is symmetric in terms of you know the block. We don't we don't use the uh, actually we can, but uh, let's say we're not gonna uh, be concerned with that. And that means if we if we look at this uh, beam as a typical beam, this is where your neutral axis is. Right, so your neutral axis is right there in the middle. That's your neutral axis. So this is where your moment is zero and you can now calculate the stress based on a simple stress distribution like that. So 
if this is where it is, uh, the total length is 22 meters. So therefore, you know, this distance is 11. And then that distance is also 11. Okay, so if we do that, um, you now have the ratio of, let's say, if you say this is P, um, where I should write it, let's say here. This is more like 11 over 11, right? Because the total length is 11 from the neutral axis. So that means if you use a simple linear ratio, that is three over 11. Okay. So now we can uh, take the uh, moment by again, because we assume, oops, like that. because we assume the hinge is here, 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 and here. So we are going to take the moment at this uh, height, okay? And once we do that, now you're gonna have a sigma moment equal to zero. Now you have this 20 multiplied by the height from here. That is two meters. All right. And look at this uh, free body diagram. Once you cut this free body diagram at the rate line, what you have is in fact, this uh, free body, maybe I should write this first. Okay, and then this one is downward, that one is upward. Okay, and then this is 20. So we cut the free body diagram at this distance, which is two meters. Okay, uh, we take the moment here, so that means you have the couple, two couples, okay? This one is coupled with this one, and then that one is coupled with that one. And now you know this is uh, 311 of the P coming from this ratio, okay? The base of this is 11 meters, so the high here is 311, that's 1111, so that is basically P. So you have two couples, that means this moment is equal to two couples of P, because they are all P's, right? I have 311, which is the, the magnitude of this, multiplied by three, okay? Because my neutral axis is here, so that distance is three plus one multiplied by 11. Okay. So by solving this, oops, it's a bad one. By solving this, I got P equals 1.6. Two uh, kilo Okay, and I can do the same with the second the uh, free body diagram, which is uh, here where we have the hinges on this uh, columns. Just cut the free body diagram through here. You know, and then you have your second free body diagram. Like that. And then you have 20 and then you have 40. 
So you are sigma moment equal to zero would mean that you have 20 multiplied by six plus 40 multiplied by uh, three, right? And then that should be seven. I forgot that the high is not the same. And I remember here, but not before. This is three, so this has to be seven. Okay. And this is going to be equal to uh, same. 2p, 311 multiplied by 3 plus 1 multiplied by 11. Okay, so uh, here we have p is equal to 11 uh, kilonewton. Okay, so now uh, we can uh, solve the uh, forces in the columns this time, the axial force in the columns this time. So, you know, the process from now on is going to be pretty similar to uh, the portal, but we're going to have to begin from beams instead. Okay. Um, let's say I give you the uh, fraction one point. I don't understand why, you know, when, when I move this, uh, you, you know, the uh, the numbers becomes very blur like that. Um, this is basically 22 over 13. Okay. So we can now move on uh, with that knowledge. Moment, please. Now that P is not twenty. No, 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 no. Uh, one moment. So many numbers on my note. So, um, yes, that's correct. Uh, twenty-two over thirteen. So that's correct. All right. So my apologies. So that's, that's a P, that's 22 over 13. Okay. And then multiply with that with uh, three over 11. So you got something like uh, six over 13, that's the one. Okay, so let's uh, move on and use a good note and not try to do this again. Okay, so now uh, we will begin uh, with the beams now. So let's begin with beam number one. So this time again with this, but beam number one, um, it now has the, uh, the P that is equal to 22 over 13, right? And again, we can use sigma uh, moment e equal to zero. And you know that this is going to be four meters, this distance. So moment is simply 22 over 13 multiplied by four, which is 88 over 13. Okay, and now you know uh, the internal forces on one end, you can proceed to achieve another end, simple as that. And again, it's a red one, so that's 22 over 13, and then this one is going up, so this one is going to be down, and it's 88 over 13. But that's the end of beam number one. Okay, is there any question? Again, you know, the calculation itself is not difficult because 
uh, the idea of using either the portal or the cantilever method is just to, to turn your frame into a determinate structure. Once we use the portal concept to solve for the shear or the cantilever concept to solve for the axial force, the rest is just playing around with free body diagram until you get everything, you know? So before we move, we can move on to beam number two. We need to check the free body diagram a little bit. Okay, so this is 22 uh, over 13 going up. So this better be 22 over 13 coming down. And then this is the second column. So this one is six over 13, right? This is from column B. Okay. And therefore, uh, you can calculate the shear on the left. Okay, this is 28 over 13. So from this, you can move on to your beam number two. Okay, so this is one, this one is gonna be 28 over 13 coming down. Remember we have a hinge, so we can take another sigma moment e equal to zero here, and then your moment is basically 28 over 13 multiplied by three. Okay. Um, that's, uh, we should write down here too that this is 88 over 13. This is 84 over 13. Okay, so you got uh, 84 over 13 and you go about your business as usual. The shear on the opposite end is equal and opposite in direction. 28 over 13. In this moment, if shear is going up, the moment is coming down. Uh, another 84 over 13. Okay, so now I can uh, move on to um, the last beam. Now let's check with our free body diagram once more. We have 28, 13 going up here, so it's coming down here. Now we have the axial force from column C. It's going up this time. Six over 13, column C. Okay, so from that, you can get your shear, which incidentally, this is going to be 22 over Three, so your last beam. This is your beam three. Uh, beam number three, that is up, so this is down. 22 over, oops, 13, right? See that? That's 13, okay, my apologies. 22 over 13. So this is one is going back to be similar to beam number one, right? We have this one down, so that one is up. Same calculation of uh, 88 over 13. And likewise, that's gonna be the same, right? If this one is going down, this one is going up. 22 over 13 going up. So moment is coming down to balance that 88 over 13. So that is that.
And now you got all the stuff going on like this. So it's time to put the moment on columns. Okay, so <clears throat> what do we have here? Let's say maybe, you know, I think I, uh, my notes on the canvas remote is it's slightly better. So let's say to bring about this on the column, I'm gonna write the equilibrium for the joint once more. Okay, so you know, um, from beam number one, right here at this uh, uh, left joint, you have 88 over 13 clockwise. So this is counterclockwise of 88 over 13. Okay, and this one is that. So that one is 88 over 13. And that one is 84 over 13. Okay. This one is 84 over 13 as well. This one is 88 over 13. And then this one is 88 over 13. With this, um, we now can have the moment on the uh, columns, okay? Um, this 88 over 13, that one goes together. So this one is 172 over 13, okay? That's another 172 over 13, and that one is 88 over 13. So once you have this, you can move down to take care of the columns. Okay, remember you have a hinge here. So if you're going like this, that's uh, 88 over 13. That one is uh, not straight. That one with the hinge. 172 over 13. That is, and it's the same, you know, 172 over 13. And then this one is 88 over 13. So by by sigma moment equal to zero, you can get your shear here, first column at uh, multiply by two, right? It's equal to 88 over 13. So this shear is 44, not right? Uh, I suppose, yeah. It's 88 over 13, so that's 44 over 13. And for this, it's the same, right? V multiply by two, that's a 172 over 13. So V is uh, 80, 86, right? Over 13, okay. Now that's what it is. And 44 over 13, and that is 86 over 13. Oops, I do it again. Okay, 
And from if you get the force again on one end, the opposite end should be a piece of cake. 44 over 13. And this one is going the same direction again. Moment. And moment is 88 over 13. Okay. And this is still uh, okay, the same. That and that. That and that. That and that. Okay. So that's uh, pretty much sums up the. Uh, the columns and the, the beams on the top floor. And if you are trying to complete everything, you should now uh, incorporate the axial force on that, you know, which should not be too difficult. You have uh, 20 coming in here. And then you have this, uh, 44 over, uh, 13 and then you can you know carry on okay now uh, I think it's it's more the same but slightly more uh, complicated because uh, the uh, you now have uh, more joints okay uh, on the second floor and again this time you're gonna have to go through the joint before you can can i carry on for a few more minutes so that uh, we can finish this maybe oh yes to to do it next time Continue. Oh, okay all right thanks uh so bear with me a little bit so now we are going to deal with the uh, beams on the second floor, but this time again, you have to go uh, through the free body diagram of the joint. Okay. Remember that uh, you got 22 over 13 from your uh, cantilever approach. And then at the bottom, you got 10. So you have to uh, 11 or 10, I'm sorry. So that's 11. Okay, we got this from uh, this. Remember, you got P equal to 11 and then 22 over 13 from the first procedure. So by uh, looking at these two loads, now you can calculate the shear that will act on your P. Okay, that's a 143, 160. What? Um, I don't think that's correct at all. Hang on. Yeah, that's 165 over 13. Okay. So once you have this, it's uh, more of the same, you know? Uh, you can go through the beam now with this 165 over 13, and then using the sigma moment equal to uh, zero, that is going to be, uh, the moment is equal to 165 over 13 multiplied by four. Huh? Okay. Number is big now. So that's uh, 660 over. 13, okay? That's your moment. And of course, now we got the force on one end, another end should be, you know, business as usual. Go up, that one comes down, 660 over 13, okay? 
And then you would do the same with the second joint, okay? You have another, um, I have to go back there and look. Do I have the number with me? Okay, that's uh, six over 13. Coming down. And then you have the uh, three. Okay, maybe I should uh, say this is from column A, this is from column E, so this is from column B, this is from column F, okay? And this one goes up, so that one comes down, 165 over 13. Where's a lot of fours, right? Yeah, that's correct. So you have the, this one goes up. Um, I got this number before wrong. Okay. One moment, please. I'm confused myself. How can I have one, only one? Okay, <laughs> 165 over 13 plus six over 13 plus three multiplied by 13. So that's uh, 210 over 13, okay? And uh, remember that, you know, uh, right now you don't, you should not concern yourself with the moment because you, you need to put the shear on this beam. Okay, but now you have 210 over 13 and this guy is going to be um, and using sigma moment equal to 210 over 13 multiplied by three this time I believe right uh, where's the problem yeah that's a three so that's uh 63 over 13 that's a moment and right this one should go up uh, equal opposite 210 over 13 and the moment should come down 6.30 over 13, okay? That's the second beam and I bet the third one, my uh, right, okay. So we continue on and uh, it should be uh, business as usual. Take a look at this. You have this one coming up, so that one comes down to 10 over 13, but this time this one goes up, right? Uh, 613, one goes up as well, um, three. So you should have this one as, just come back and be 160, five over 13, right? Right. Yeah, so, you know, it comes back to be similar to the first one on the left, okay? And this is not quite complete yet, but I think you, I believe you, you got the idea. And once you have the uh, shear from here, and the moment from here, 
you can uh, use this moment to uh, you know impose the the moment on the columns on the second floor. Uh, right. Let's. If you want me to do it a little bit more because it's a bit late now, I don't think we can complete this. But let's say for the columns. Similar to before. Uh, previous beam. Okay, now uh, to, to finish the job on the column, you should see that we are going to repeat this again. But now we have the moment from the beam that is uh, six. Uh, 160 over 13 going clockwise. So this one is 660 over 13. And I need to go back and look at the, the columns here. The moment is uh, 88 over 13, right? So this one is kind of clockwise, so it's going clockwise. So it's 88 over 13, you know, and then the second joint, um, we have the, the moment, what is that? Uh, Eighty six, right? No, one, 172 over 13, that's a moment. So I have uh, 172 over 13. And then I have the moment from the beam on the left. So that's uh, 660 over 13. And then I have this one going this, and then that's uh, 6.30 over uh, 13. So, you know, you keep doing this and hopefully, you know, things will come to a good conclusion, okay? Because the, the third joint, I think this moment is the same, right? 172 over 13. And this uh, one is, if it goes like this, it should go like that. It's the same number. No, 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 no. Like this, and then like that, okay? And then you, you get this moment. You do some uh, self-calculation to obtain this value yourself, and so on, okay? Uh, it's not 100% complete yet, but I think you should be able to complete your free body diagram. So if there is any question, folks. I think that's it for today. Got uh, ant attack in the house. Uh, question, folks? No, ka. No, ka. All right. 